My uh, next guest tonight has been covering Donald Trump since he began his campaign for president back in the summer of 2015. Now she has written this new book, Unbelievable, My Front Row Seat to the Craziest Campaign in American History. Uh, here are just a few of the moments from that time. Take a look. There's something happening. They're not reporting it, Katie. You're not reporting it, Katie. But there's something happening, Katie. She's back there, little Katie. She's back there. What a lie it was. No, what a lie, Katie Turner. Uh, this uh, person, Katie Turner, she knows nothing about my campaign. She said, you know, things about my campaign like she's an expert. We don't even let her in. We don't talk to her. We don't let people talk to her because she's a, you know, not a very good reporter. But actually, Katie Turr, what happened? She mm. was so great. I just saw her back there. I gave her a big kiss. Really? She was fantastic. Okay. He's obsessed with her. He's obsessed with her. Please welcome Katie Turr. <laughs> Montage. Yeah, I don't know what it's like for you to to watch that. Obviously, you were there for all those moments, but the president of the now president of the United States is obsessed with you. And I'm just thinking to to be in a giant room at one of his rallies and have him single you out and have the whole room boo you. How does that feel? It feels a little bit like this right now. Yeah. <laughs> really weird. Right. And uncomfortable. We're, not, we're an uncomfortable. Okay. <laughs> no, no. And, and you're being taunted by an orange-haired freak. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Ooh, Katie. Little Katie. Little Katie. Uh, well, at least now there's some laughs here. Uh, <laughs> must have been a strange moment for you when you first realized that Trump knew who you were, that it he was, was talking about odd. you. It was very odd. What was it the was first time? The very first time I was in the physical vicinity of him. I didn't know Donald Trump at all. I knew him as the legendary Donald, Donald Trump from the New York tabloids in New York, but mm -hmm. nothing personal. I mean, I knew him from The Apprentice, mm -hmm. that you're fired. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but that was it, not Donald Trump, the presidential candidate. This was a few days after he announced. We're standing around a backyard pool in New Hampshire. About 200 people were there, not like the 10,000 person rallies or so that we came to see. And I'm, I'm just tweeting what he's saying. And he's talking about Mexico sending rapists over the border and how the media are a bunch of liars and how he always gets standing ovations. And then suddenly I hear, Katie, you're not even paying attention. And I don't look up because obviously it's not me. Right. And my producer hard elbows me in the side and I look up and it is me. Everyone in the whole um, backyard is, is, is looking at me and I just yelled back, I'm tweeting what you're saying. Yeah. And he was happy with that. Yeah. He kept going with his speech. But it's so strange as we saw in that montage and that was just the tip of the iceberg. He couldn't stop. He just so many times would point you out in the yeah. crowd uh, he might be in love with you. I don't know, I, you know. I don't know. Um, he... <laughs> you seem so listen, flattered. Well, listen, I was the first network news uh, reporter to cover him, to take his presidential campaign seriously. Mm -hmm. um, and he thought, in the first interview that we did, I'm sure he thought that he was going to get a very friendly, easy interview. I'm, I wasn't a political person. I don't know, I'm five foot two, I'm, I'm relatively young, and I don't know what he was thinking. But I didn't back down, and I kept holding up the facts to what he was saying. He didn't often line up with the facts. And he couldn't intimidate me, and he couldn't push me around, so I think that's maybe part of the reason why we kept hearing little Katie, third-rate reporter. You, um, it's got a ring to it. Uh, you... <laughs>